the player profile of Ethan Bear next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase so in this edition of locked on capitals we talk about ethan bear and where will he fit into the capitals lineup he seems like a perfect player great defensively a good two-way game but where is he going to fit as the capitals have reached their capacity for right hand shots we'll talk about that in the show a little bit later we will talk about his scouting report in his earliest days what did the scouts say about him But just to get it going here, we will talk about his background and what kind of player are the Capitals getting. I should point out that it's not official, official, as there has not been been pen to paper so far on that contract. All the insiders, everyone says it's a deal, two years, they have money listed, all that kind of thing. But I guess it's not official, official, but the fact that Lucas Johansson got put on the waiver wire as I record this on Monday does lend it to believe that uh, it could be happening somewhat sooner than later. We do know uh, that he is recovering from a shoulder surgery. So we're hoping uh, that we can see him on this team as he seems to be quite a dynamic player. But what kind of player is he? He was drafted in the fifth round in the 2015 NHL entry draft by the Oilers from the Seattle Thunderbirds in the Western Hockey League. He was assigned or assigned, excuse me, to a three-year entry-level contract with the Oilers on July 2nd of 2016. Bear made his NHL debut on March 1st, 2018 in a game against the Nashville Predators. He recorded his first NHL goal in a 5-4 to overtime loss to the Ducks. Bear's shoulder won't receive a qualifying offer from Vancouver, which will make him an unrestricted free agent. Um, and that is what's happening there, ultimately why the Capitals were in on the runnings and why did the capitals what made them the front runners was the fact that they were willing to offer term other teams were just willing to sign him to a deal kind of till the end of the summer and then we'll give you a new deal he's like he wanted the sure thing so vancouver was trying to clear cap space and the capitals were happy to oblige bear who was injured during the 2023 iihf world championship underwent uh, shoulder surgery june 15th and is projected to be unavailable until December. The 26-year-old defenseman who was playing on a one-year $2.2 million contract had three goals, 16 points, uh, 25 PIMS, 39 hits, 82 block shots, and 61 outings in 22-23. A dynamic player, suffices to say. He will be a huge upgrade on the Capitals' blue line. And why is he a key piece? Because this is the Capitals' looking to the horizon. We know that this season, as we're drawn back down to reality, they're struggling a little bit. But if you can kind of move your head up to the horizon, you can see that this team is going to be really good. And who is the next wave? Who is the next uh, promising batch on the blue line? As we know, Rasmus Sandin was the big addition that was picked up at the trade deadline, right? We know that Martin Faravari, he's a big piece. And now, as soon as Ethan Bear is official, you have your next wave. As we do know, Jensen has struggled some this year. Is he possibly an expendable piece? I would say that he is a front runner if there is an expendable piece on the blue line. Um, So that is what they need. John Carlson's not getting any younger. 
Uh, you take a look at TVR, which you can also play on the left-hand side as well. So it is going to be a bit of juggling, suffices to say, but historically he has been great. What did he do for the Canucks? Ethan Bear has been the Canucks' best defenseman at preventing the opposition from recovering pucks. And it isn't particularly even close. His intelligence and his strength, despite his size, Bear is listed as 5 foot 11, 197 pounds, while the average NHL defenseman is about 6 foot 2. 205 pounds has allowed him to gain position on opponents and win battles in corners, freeing up pucks for his defensive partner. Check, check, check. I don't need to say anything more. Wrap it up. I'll take it. Let's go. I like Ethan Bear. I think he's going to hit fit this team like a hand in a glove, and it's going to be an upgrade it's big time. Bear has been very good at angling opponents away from the pucks and getting the first touch. When Bear is the first defenseman to play a puck on the puck following an opposition dump, and the opponent will recover the puck 47% of the time, leading the Canucks. Moreover, when Bear also completes 63% of his passes on the first touch, also leading Canucks defensemen. So I don't know what the Canucks were thinking. Um, I think that, you know, I do know what they were thinking. I know that they were trying to free up cap space as they are a team that is trying to reposition themselves so that they can be make bigger moves and, and get under the cap. Um, and it's a Canucks team that is a little bit better than I think that some people thought they were going to be, but their loss is going to be the capitals gain. When have we seen this before? Dylan Strom. Uh, well, he comes to mind as the Chicago Blackhawks did not give him a qualifying offer. And how great is he playing for the capitals right now? It has to burn red hot for Dylan Strom every time he plays the Blackhawks. Like, how about now? How you like me now? So I think that that's the case for Ethan Bear. He brings a lot. And when you, when I looked at his scouting report, when I looked at his history, there was no things that, you know, gave me pause or question except for the shoulder injury, which, you know, I have no reason to believe that he, you know, got the surgery and should be good to go, you know? So unless it's a crazy thing, you know, I thought that about Nick Baxter, but not an apples for apples comparison. Um, I think that he is going to be a huge piece on this team. Tip of the hat goes to Brian McClellan for being aggressive. You know, he saw that other teams were, were kind of non-committal, like we'll give you this little meh deal until the off season. And then, then we'll take care of you. And he's like, Nope, here's all my chips, Ethan bear. How about now? And Ethan bear could not resist uh, so I do like when Brian McClellan sets his eyes on things that he uh, is a man on a mission. And we've seen this before. We saw that with Darcy Kemper. Darcy Kemper, I mean, if you take a look at it, was not favored to come to this team. So in any event, Ethan Bear is going to be a great addition to this team. What he did for Vancouver was really great. He played on a couple other teams, a few other teams as well. But uh, his most recent team there, the Canucks, uh, they're going to be missing a key piece. And I think that ultimately they might be kicking themselves. Um, but, you know, I'm not real well-versed on the Canucks depth chart and who they have in their AHL affiliate. But it does seem that, uh, you know, he is a great player uh, that the Canucks are giving up. But I think he's going to be the perfect fit uh, for the Capitals. And I'm really excited to see what he brings to this team when he shows up. So uh, after the break here, we will talk about the scouting report. Historically, what did the scouts say about him? We'll talk about that coming up. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And guys, let me tell you something. Have you ever been watching a game on Sunday, a football game, and you're like, meh, I don't really care? Open up the FanDuel app. Put a little bit of money on it. It makes watching the game that much more exciting. All of a sudden, that Commander's game is that much more interesting. All of a sudden, that Ravens game is that much more interesting. So check it out on FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So what is the scouting report of Mr. Ethan Bear? Where will he fit in on this team? What did they say about him in his earliest days? Sometimes you can truly gauge a player when you take the way back machine and you look kind of what player they were historically. His reviews kind of in his scouting report are a little bit like Max Patch ready, where just pretty much all glowing, not a lot of negative. There is a lot to like about Ethan Bear. So let's take a look at his scouting report. They said the young mobile defenseman can move the puck effectively and play major minutes as well as block shots and kill penalties. Small for a defenseman, five foot 11. He still has to prove he can win one-on-one battles against opposing forwards on a consistent basis. He was an offensive force in junior hockey, but has yet to show that kind of prowess in the NHL. Again, that was the scouting report, long range potential mobile to a defenseman. If you've been listening to this whole show, you would know in the first segment, you heard that he has overcome all those obstacles. Most recently here with the Canucks, despite his size, he is a one heck of a player. He is a guy that will get involved into the rush scoring opportunities, great defensively. And he is a guy that even though he is not the biggest guy on the ice, can be a game changer. And that is ultimately what the Capitals are looking for. So that is what is exciting for me as a Capitals fan is the potential of what can be uh, for Ethan Bear. And it's one of the interesting things is that uh, Brian McClellan, uh, he has, uh, Ethan Bear has been on max radar for quite some time. He was even in on him last season. It just didn't materialize. So that's what I'm talking about. When Brian McClellan sets his sights on something, usually he gets it done. So uh, a great move. Uh, I think hopefully there's other moves like this, but if you take a look at the scouting report, oftentimes you can see what kind of player they are. So we can already kind of contrast the scouting report versus his NHL play. They said he has yet to prove that in the NHL. He's proven that in the NHL, that he can be everything that, you know, they were worried about on him. So uh, again, you take a look at him, the Canucks, the best defenseman at preventing the opposition from recovering pucks, is in close, his intelligence, his strength, despite his size. Uh, and he led the Canucks. He was one of the best players on the team. Ultimately, I don't know why the Canucks are parting ways with him, but a solid upgrade for the Capitals. We're hoping uh, that he can join the team sooner than later. Um, as the, you know, I wouldn't say that the blue line is horrible this year, but it could definitely stand to be upgraded. And Ethan Bear fits the bill. You know, he is uh, recovering from that shoulder surgery. He's not going to be ready tomorrow, you know, next week probably, but it's going to be soon. But like I talked about yesterday and to start off the show, that Lucas Johansson got put on waivers uh, with the mission of getting sent down to Hershey. Uh, My hope in all of that is he doesn't get scooped up by another team because I think that Lucas Johansson is a great player. Um, but you know, with that said, how long are the Capitals going to wait to see if he materializes? It's always going to be next year on Lucas Johansson. And, you know, he broke camp with the team played well. It's a bit disappointing suffices to say, uh, that, uh, he didn't get to where he wanted to be, but that's all a part of it. The Capitals have to make moves, uh, to bring in these players. And in the next segment, I'll talk about where does he fit in as on the right side in particular, the Capitals are stacked. There's not a lot of openings there. There's none as it stands right now. Something is going to have to move in order to accommodate him. But again, taking a look at him historically, and if you do the first segment there, talking about his background, the second segment here, his scouting report, it's all good. All of the things that were question marks in his scouting report, he addressed, he overcame uh, in the NHL thus far. So it is going to be a big addition. Um, I always get excited when they bring in these new players, just like I'll be excited to see what Max Pacioretty has, because let's let's be honest here. What we've seen on the ice this year for the Capitals, whether it's the blue line or the power play, there's been some questions and definitely not quite as good as it's been historically. So hopefully bringing in Pacioretty, hopefully bringing in someone like Ethan Bear will help be that that new blood to help reinvigorate this team, give it a, a jolt to get it going here a little bit. I still don't think they're done. 
I expect Mac to go make another big move, maybe someone that'll help get Ovi off the schneid. But, uh, and as far as Ethan Bear is concerned, really exciting. Scouting report, good. Couple question marks, but again, all of those were answered when he's been playing in the NHL. Any concerns about how is he going to perform on the big stage on the NHL? He did that. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about, okay, we know that he's good, but where does he fit in? Who comes out of the lineup? I'll talk about that next. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And one of the things that's frustrating for me is I found out my favorite band's coming to play in town or my favorite sports team is playing. How can I find tickets? Game time takes the stress away. And what's even better this time of year is game time helps you save money as you can take $20 off your first ticket purchase. Hey, $20 is a lot when you consider how much gas is, how much groceries are. That is why I love game time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account or redeem code L O C K E D. O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Again, you'll have to excuse me as I am over getting better from a cold uh, on Sunday. I had zero voice. Usually I do a show Sunday night, wasn't able to do one, did one yesterday, which is actually today, a little sneak behind the curtain. Um, so my voice is getting better, uh, but uh, just bear with me as it still is not 100%. So we know that Ethan Bear is a great player, a dynamic player, two-way player, Good defensively, can get involved in the rush and scoring opportunities. But where does he fit? There is not a lot of vacancies. There's not a lot of holes to fill on the blue line. As we know, Mac took care of all of those in the offseason. So where is he going to fit? Well, it does seem that a move might be necessary. So if you take a look at Alex Alexiev and Lucas, o- uh, Lucas Johansson, Uh, appear to be the odd man out. And as we know, Lucas Johansson was put on waivers for purpose of reassignment to Hershey. The worrisome part is that both will have to clear waivers. Uh, So Lucas Johansson so far anyway will have to clear waivers. Um, And in a potential that he could get scooped up, is it possible the Caps have a trade in the works being that they have a glut of defensemen? You know, kind of like I've talked about on the show, if you're an everyday, you know that I talk about that there is a glut of goalies, netminders, um, cage cops, whatever you want to call them. Um, The same thing goes for the blue line. And there's not going to be enough dance partners for all the blue liners out there. So there is going to have to be someone that is potentially going to get traded, um, something of that nature. Bear is right-handed in the caps, already have three right-handed blue liners in Carlson, Jensen, and TVR. But the good thing about it is that TVR can play on his offside, even though Spencer Carberry is more of a traditionalist. He says, I just prefer lefty-righty more so on the back end than with the forwards. I find the ozone touches and your and your regroup touches when you're playing lefty-righty are a lot more seamless. So he is a little bit different to that way or kind of more typical, I guess you could say. Adam Oates was the one coach that was a little bit different in that regard. Um, so uh, again, a trade could be afoot. Uh, Bear is still recovering and not ready from the Capitals yet. Caps don't need to rush. They have time for uh, Bear when he is ready to go. So one of the things that they were talking about um, is that uh, Jensen, Nick Jensen, could be potentially a piece that is traded as of late. He has not quite lived up to expectation. So that is a possibility. And sometimes it's tough. You know, people get attached for whatever reason. And I, I don't want to lose this guy. I really like this guy. Ethan Bear is going to be an upgrade and he's going to be an upgrade. I hate to say it, I think over uh, someone like a Jensen. So in what we're doing here, what the Capitals, what Brian McClellan, when I say we, I mean the Capitals, what they're doing, because we're all in it together, right? Caps fans, we are part of a hashtag all caps, is that we want this team to get better. And it's not, we know that it is going to be 
you know, a bit rough here for the next couple of years, uh, basically until Alex Ovechkin hangs up the skates because of the deals that we hear about, that there's no tear it down to the studs rebuild until Ovi hangs up the skates. So, but it's preparing for the future. And we have a lot of key pieces in place uh, and, and pieces for the future. When we talk about Martin Farivari, we talk about Rasmus Sandin. And then officially, Ethan Bear won pen is put to paper. Ethan Bear. So it is planning for the future uh, for the team, but uh, it is going to be a tough question. Uh, that is the perception that uh, Jensen could be the odd man out. Of course, it depends on, you know, who Brian McClellan is kicking the tires on. Maybe another team wants, you know, TVR, you know, something crazy like that. Or, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't heard the deals, but it is a potential uh, that, you know, there could be a team interested in someone else, but kind of the front runner uh, is Jensen, in my opinion, as he has, he's been a little bit lacking in the, in the department of uh, playing on the ice and defensively sound, those kind, kinds of things that uh, if there was uh, an expendable piece, uh, potentially it could be Jensen, but Bear does seem to be a good option for the Capitals. Um, again, he is a guy that is physical. He, he can uh, get involved in the rush defensively. He checks all the boxes that you're looking for for the Capitals. So I think that there's a lot to be happy about. Again, I, it does appear to me that it seems to be a loss for the Vancouver Canucks as they are going to be missing a key piece. He really lit it up for the Canucks. But again, they're trying to offload some ca salary cap issues that they're having staying under budget as they're preparing for their future. Uh, so the Capitals were happy to oblige and say, we'll take him, we'll take him over to the Capitals. And I think that the Caps are ultimately going to be the better for it. Uh, the question, and I get this asked quite often, is that when is he going to be good to go? When will he join the Caps? Well, again, it's not official official as of yet. Uh, and he is also recovering from that shoulder surgery. So it is going to be some time. I would say, but eventually he'll join this team and it's going to be good. You're going to have a, some big additions. You know, Joel Edmondson came in. He was a little bit late to the party. Now we know Ethan Bear and also Max Patch ready. It's going to be interesting to see what this team looks like with those new pieces out on the ice. Um, and hopefully that's enough to help take the Capitals to the next level because we do know that they have been inconsistent. You know, they'll win two, they'll drop two, they'll win one, they'll lose one. Um, if they have any hopes of climbing the Metro, they're going to have to do it by stringing together wins, consistent play. The power play needs to get going. Alex Ovechkin needs to get going. Um, and maybe a player like Ethan Bear, maybe a guy like Max Pacioretty, maybe that will be exactly what the doctor ordered uh, because this team does need to take the next step. I think they're missing a couple of key pieces. I don't think this team is too far away from being a really great team. Uh, they're just missing a couple of key pieces. Uh, that I think will help ultimately catapult them over the top. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are what makes this show successful. And I have you guys to thank. So after you're done watching this or listening to this, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first 24-7 sports streaming channel. Listen, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.